To enroll in our course and gain access to the source files, you can check us out on tunefiles.com by either purchasing or joining the membership. You can purchase on Udemy, or if you prefer, join our membership on YouTube. Links are in the description. Before we dive in and start filling the character, there's one more thing I need to do. I realized that I forgot to add in the line work for the top portion of the hair. We have the outline of it, but I had some inside lines I forgot to add. And this is a very quick fix. The first thing we need to do is make sure that we locate the layer that we need to work on. So if I scroll down here, I can locate hair, click on that. And let's also make sure that we have the sketch enabled so we can see what we're doing here. I'm also going to come down and enable the ability to fade the unselected layers so that way it's easier to see when I add in these lines. So on the hair layer I'm going to grab the brush tool. I'm still using the ink brush that I was using before and I'm just going to come in here and just make sure I have a good view here and we just want to add in those few lines that I forgot to add in before. So I'll start near the top here and I can just come in and add in those lines. And actually I'm gonna undo that one and just move it over like that. There we are. And then we have just one more right here we could add. And that's looking pretty good. And again, you can go in and add more just depending on how you want to design your character. But with that, we can move on and start filling in the different layers. And to do this, we're going to take advantage of the paint bucket tool. We could go in and color in the hair or any part of this by using a brush, and you could do that. Of course, there are many different brushes, so you could use a painting brush and you could start painting inside the lines. You could create separate layers for this, and you could eventually mask it if you wanted to, so that way you're more inside the lines, and you could then eventually rig it all together. I'm, however, just going to use the paint bucket as that's what's going to suit my style. So first, I'm just going to undo those strokes, and then grab the paint bucket. Now just to overview really quick, when you grab the paint bucket, at the top you can select your color, in addition to sampling colors by using the eyedropper. You have your opacity as well as the tolerance. And the tolerance has to deal with just how much it fills in versus the outlines. So you can overcome the outlines in some ways or you can ignore them and that can also lead to problems with filling in. And we'll get to that as we start to work with this. And then you have your modes once again at the top. With that, let's just start with the head. And you can choose any color you wish when designing your characters, of course. We could come in here and just click on that swatch and begin the process of selecting the colors that we want. However, since we have this reference, what I'm going to do is just bring in that original reference here. And when I click on it, you can see that we can easily tell where all the colors are for this. And I'll start with the face. And you'll note that I do have a shade as well as a highlight on this character. We're going to focus on the larger portion of the face. That's the color that we want. That's the base color. And so we're just going to eyedropper over and select that color. There we go. We now have the color. We can jump back over here to the head layer. And using the paint bucket, we're just going to click inside of the head to fill in. Now again, I'm using a tolerance of 25%. Let me just undo this and let's see what happens if I were to increase this all the way to 100. You can see that it basically overcompensates. It's thinking like, oh, well, the tolerance is 100%. We're going to tolerate this, you know, as much as possible. It's just going to basically go anywhere and everywhere. Now, if we go to zero and do this, in this case, we still don't really have much issue, but 
if you run into a problem where you're having an issue filling in and you can't find a gap within the outline because in order to fill in, you have to make sure you close in your objects. And if you can't find that gap, then upping the tolerance is not a bad idea. And so for right now, I'm just gonna leave it at 25% and if I need to adjust it, I will. So here we have the head now filled in. So let's click and fill in the back ear as well. And that's not looking bad at all. So now once we have that, we're going to move over to the hair. And to do this once again, we can just click on the reference and we'll use the eyedropper and come in and select the hair. Once we have the color, I can jump over here to the hair layer and we're just going to use that paint bucket and fill it in. Now here's also where tolerance might come into play. If I were to just zoom in here, you can see that we have just some edges here that are not quite being filled in. So let's undo that last fill in and come over here and try to kick this up to about 50. When we fill it in, I think it's covering that area a little bit better. Let's try 70. You'll see that it's kind of going into the line work a little bit when it's filling in. And so that's what tolerance is good for when you're working this way. So again, just keep an eye on that. And again, you don't want to up the tolerance too much because it can just fill in everything as demonstrated. So we're just going to go with that. I'll kick my tolerance to about 60% just so we can kind of keep it around the place we just had it, but maybe a little lower. And then we're going to come over here and using this same color, we can fill in the ponytail. So here's the ponytail, paint bucket, fill it in. Also for the hair strands, we'll click on the big hair strand, fill that in, small hair strand, and then click inside. Let's focus on the rest of the face and then we can move down. I'll come back here to the reference image here. And at this point, it might be easier to just isolate the reference because as you can see with the fill colors now in place, it's covering the reference. And so I'm just going to come in here, hold an alt and click on that visibility option to hide everything except for the reference. So that way it's easier to, you guessed it, reference. <laughs> so now, we want to focus in on the face and we can start with either the eyebrows or the eyelids. And the eyebrows, as you can see, are orange, but they're just a little bit different compared to the hair. They're just more dark, diluted, whatever the case is. We're just going to come in here and select that color. Once we have the color selected, we can come over here and just re-enable the eyebrows and one by one, fill them in. Just take a quick look here. You can see we might want to up the tolerance on this one. Let's just go to 70, see what that does. Eh, try 80. Not sure how far up we can go. That's a little bit better. And if we need to, we can also come in and just sort of with our brush, just kind of fill it out a little bit like that, just so it doesn't look like it's not quite covered. There we go. So now if we zoom back out, we have something that looks like this. Actually looking at this, let's grab black and just come in and again, try to touch that up just a little bit. There we go. Okay, that should work. Now, we will eyedropper the orange color once again. And then just do this for the second eyebrow. There we go. Once again, though, we do have just a slight issue with the corners. And this can always be an issue just when you're dealing with really small spaces. We can just come in and even just adding just like a little drop like that probably is enough to cover that little space. 
and there we are. To view the rest of this course and gain access to the source files, you can check us out on tunefiles.com, Udemy, or join us on YouTube.